You're not all from Pittsburgh. Hey, how can that be? Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. Sorry for the uh, delay here. I was trying to get everything in order. Um, we're doing a special session tonight on the T-Line because the T-Line has become a very integrated uh, part of how to trade candlesticks successfully. And I think the T-Line is something that is not really fully comprehended by most investors out there right now. The T-Line is the eight exponential moving average. And it works extremely effectively for showing us when it's time to be buying uh, positions. Um, and it's very important for doing trend analysis. Now, uh, I, uh, before we get too deep into the T-line, trend analysis is one of the most important aspects of uh, investing. You want to be going with the trend of the market, obviously. That doesn't necessarily mean all positions are going to go in the same direction. Fortunately, with candlestick scanning, we're able to find good, long, and short positions in spite of which direction the market is going, whether it's going up, going down, or going sideways. And the parameters are that we have signals, patterns, stochastics, trend lines, and moving averages to tell us where uh, prices are probably going to be going to. Using that information, it comes down to one simple factor, is we have discovered that the T-line is extremely effective. Mike is breaking up. All right, let's get this resolved. Okay, is that any better? Okay. Um, kind of the history of the T-line was a few years back. The reason uh, we were one of the major reasons for setting up the uh, Candlestick Forum was exactly for that reason, to have a forum where people could come together and add information that would improve everybody's, in tra everybody's trading using the T-line, or not using the T-line now, <coughs> using uh, candlesticks. And everybody knows uh, Rick, uh, hit and run candlesticks. He was one of my first uh, private training students. Came down from Anchorage, Alaska. We sat in front of the screens for a full weekend. It was a butt sore, brain frying session. I mean, we spent uh, probably a good 30 hours straight, not straight, but uh, 30 hours on a weekend sitting in front of uh, the screens. He went back, he tinkered with candlesticks and had enough wherewithal that he came back to me a while later and said, Take a look at the T line. It's, or at that time, we were calling it the 8 exponential moving average. The T-line right now represents trigger line. Um, and so what, we boil, what it boils down to is who is using the T-line. And if it's extremely accurate, why isn't everybody using it? Number one, we know that the simple moving averages, like the 200, the 50, and the 20, are simple moving averages. And, and those are the ones that most of the investors around the world uh, have been using for years to make their decisions uh, for uh, you know, putting on their uh, portfolios, mostly big money management people. That leaves the eight exponential moving average, which we have on our charts. So if everybody's using those big, the uh, 200, the 50, and the 20, if uh, who is using the uh, the eight exponential moving average? And the answer to that is probably 99.9999% of the people in the world 
don't even know what the T line is. And is a, it's extremely accurate. So if everybody's not using it, the 200, the the uh, 20 and the uh, 50 simple moving averages, we've already established we can use those for ex very good high probability reversal points that are going to act as support and resistance because everybody's watching those. If the eight exponential moving average is working extremely well for trend analysis, the answer to that is if nobody's really using it, then it's probably got to be some sort of natural uh, uh, investor, well, I don't know what you would call it, just like Fibonacci numbers are natural numbers that seem to work extremely well with, with uh, human nature. Um, uh, exactly. Uh, so anyways, so that's, that's, we've got one very simple rule. So that basically implies there's got to be a natural, some sort of natural ingredient built into the T-line. Very simple rule. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can pretty much stay in that trend until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. Now, there's going to be some uh, uh, caveats to that, and we'll try to go through that. Also, you stay in it until you see a sell signal. Now. Do all sell signals at the T-line tell us it's time to go short? Not necessarily. I was illustrating this one to uh, people here recently because this was Dean Foods. That Once we had the gap up and we got into it, we didn't lose any sleep at all because they couldn't close the line until this day right here. Now, this... Um, what time frame do you prefer... What about the two EMA? Robert, the two EMA is uh, kind of a, uh, uh, I want to say a confirming indicator to the, uh, the uh, T line. That will be another, uh, another session. The two and the three we are going to be working on as far as entry and exit strategies. Um, do you think the eight EMA is applicable for management of trend in all time frames? Yes. I, and that's what we're going to show here in this uh, session. Do you cover the use of the T-line in your books? Uh, Glenn, I don't know. Let's see. I think the T-line was just starting to be mentioned in the uh, high-profit candlestick patterns and definitely uh, being mentioned in the uh, uh, candlestick profits uh, eliminating emotions. But essentially it was uh, something that when, once uh, – Rick brought it to my attention, and we went back and back tested it, which is not a difficult process. Put the eight exponential on your uh, charts, and then go back and see how often it held holds a uh, um, holds the trend for you. Yeah, we'll we'll keep on the uh, we'll we'll try to answer all the questions at the end. So. The T-line works very effectively for telling you when it's time to be out of a trade and when it's time to be back into a trade. Um, it's just some sort of natural move. If you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, simple rule, you stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. If you see a candlestick sell signal, at another moving average, such as the 50 and below the T-line, it's that much more effective. Um, so uh, the T-line, the again, is something that you can stay with because there's going to be a lot of times in a trend where you're going to see signals that appear like reversal signals, but they don't confirm. And now they I would say they don't confirm. They don't confirm now. But if they don't close above or below the T-line, you want to stay with that trend. So let's see. There's going to be lots of points to be made in here. So knowing what the T-line is telling us, we can take advantage of different patterns and situations using the T-line. For example, we know in the T-line crunch that 
the moving averages are very effective. Going through the 50, where's the next target? The 200. At the 200, are they going to fail and pull back to the 50, or are they going to go through? Well, the T-line crunch is very effective that when you start seeing uh, the factor that they cannot get the uh, close below the T-line, notice how the T-line continues to push the move up, and then once they uh, break through, they're going to push it through. At least you know that if you're taking profits here, you know you want to be ready to be buying back in uh, very very quickly. And it also helps you with the biggest fupa or the biggest uh, oh, mental problem that most of us have, that if we get out of a position, for example, this is a perfect buy. There's your bullish harami telling you the selling had stopped. Close above the T-line tells you we're in uptrend. And then we have a bearish engulfing, uh, I'm sorry, a bearish harami and a close below the T-line here at the uh, at the 50-day moving average. You cut the chart off right there. That looks like a very good reason to be out of this trade. But using candlestick signals in the T-line, the next day they do a bullish candle and close back up above the T-line. Stochastic still heading up. There's a lot of emotional, oh, what do I want to say, rigmarole that most people, if they get out of a position, they do not want to get back into that position, even if, especially if they have to pay a higher price for it. And why is that? Because most uh, most people have a uh, an emotional problem that what if I sold here and I bought back here and it immediately went right back down? Boy, would I look stupid for doing that. The nice thing about candlestick analysis is it tells you when it's time to get out and tells you when it's time to get back in. And one of the confirming indicators is that if they close it below the T line after a sell signal, and then they close it back up above the T line, causing a buy signal, that gets you out of the fear of getting out of a position too early or getting out of a position and not getting back in. I always had that problem myself. I would sell, and my biggest fear would be, boy, what if it took off without me? So most of the time I'd hold on and I'd watch it go all the way back down. Now I know I can sell and I can buy right back if I need to. I may give up 30, 40, 80, 70, but I know every time in that, I'm in that position, I'm in that position at the right, right trade at the right time. So if you're using the T-line, you also want to know where is the trend uh, compared to where your uh, pricing is. For example, Remember, if we buy on a candlestick buy signal, we don't want to sell until we see a close below the T-line, except for one caveat. And that caveat is the further you move away from the T-line, the higher the probability you're going to move back to the T-line. So if you're up here and you see a candlestick sell signal potentially, and you're away from the T-line, you're up in the overbought condition, you're seeing exuberant buying, this is just that much more evidence that you want to start taking profits, at least half the position off it in here, because where is the logical spot they're going to take it back to? They're going to take it back to the T-line. Are they going to support there and do a J-hook? We have the capability of recognizing what a J-hook looks like and get back in, or are they going to keep taking it down? At this point up here, we don't know, but if we were buying down here, we're looking for a place where the probabilities are starting to say it's time to get out, and the further you move away from the T-line, the better the probabilities it's time to get out. Japanese rice traders, simple rule. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. And when that exuberance comes in and it pulls you a good distance away from the T-line, the next time you see a sell signal, take profits because the probabilities are extremely good that they're going to bring it back to the at least back to test the T-line. Now you've got the option of seeing whether the T-line holds or whether you're still in a downtrend and you can go short. Or if it holds and do a, does a J-hook, you can always buy back in. The purpose of candlestick analysis is to take the emotions as well as the guesswork out of your trading. 
and that's that was my biggest flaw with investing was I had so much emotion that uh, uh, my money was out there on the line. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I had no gauge, I had no platform for telling me when to get in or get out. The simple rules, especially now adding the T-line rules to the candlestick signals, puts you in such high probability situations that to go against them, you're definitely going to be losing money. Also, you've got what we call the T-line rollover, which is very simple. When we start seeing indecisive trading and they can't get up above the T-line, start watching for this rollover effect because once they roll it over, that's when people start giving up and they pull the plug, and that's where you can make some big moves to the downside. The T-line rollover is very simple to identify. It's kind of a slow curve, rounding top, and they can't get it to close up above the T-line. Very simple. You see a bullish signal. And again, there's our left-right combo, a hammer, bullish engulfing. There's our doji sandwich that takes us up above the T-line. Where's the first resistance at the 50? There's our T-line crunch. They push it through. Where's our next target? The 200. They fail at the 200. Where do they come back to? Right back to the T-line. It makes this very effective for getting in and getting out uh, at, the, at the appropriate places. Now, again, I'm going to go back to the reason we're doing a special session on the T-line is that it works extremely accurately. And you'll notice, and even uh, if you haven't noticed, you haven't listened very well, that in the uh, Monday night sessions or the Thursday night sessions or even on the daily chat room, my advice usually is watch to see what it does at the T-line because there's going to be a lot of days where we have things uh, closing lower, but it may not be a signal, and if it doesn't close below the T-line, it's just a down day in an uptrend, or the other side, it's a uh, up day in a downtrend, as long as it doesn't close above the T-line, you stay short. But it makes it very simple that once you're in that trend, the longer this trend persists, the stronger the sell signal needs to be and a close below the T-line. What does this set us up for? The expectation of a J-hook type pattern. There's our doji. That gives us a very simple message. They're going to move it in the direction of how they open it after a doji. If we see them pop it to the upside, we know we've got our J-hook pattern in progress. It's very easy to see that this uptrend was in progress as long as there wasn't a close below the T-line. There's a morning star signal right on the T-line. When did this sideways action come to an end? When they came over and then they did a kind of a mini scoop morning star signal that started you on your, on your way. Uh, and where could they have done it? They could have done it anywhere over here. They did it right on the T-line. Again, the further you move away from the, uh, the T-line and you see a, a, a candlestick signal, the higher the probability they're going to come back and test it. And this is where, I, this was always gut-wrenching for me, is, boy, when it was going up and going up and then they gapped it up, great things must be happening. That used to be where I would buy and then couldn't understand why it would go down right after I bought. Now, then the next step was, man, if I took profits here after this strong move, what if they kept taking it right on up? Well, I discovered the signals are going to tell you whether they're going to take it down or take it up. You can always buy back in if they're going to take it up. But the probabilities, and that's exactly what the Japanese rice traders created for us, was situations where the probabilities were greatly in our favor that we could recognize where the next price move should be. In this case, they were going to take it back to the T-line, and they couldn't hold it at the T-line. It stayed in a downtrend as long as there wasn't a close above the T-line. Again, the reason that we're making this kind of a special session is, as you have seen over the last 
few years, the T-line has been a very effective uh, trend analytical tool. Just like the candlestick signals, they create a situation where the probabilities are in your favor, and then applying the T-line to it just enhances those probabilities of being in your uh, in your favor all that much greater. All right, when you're using it, the trend analysis there for intraday, here's soybean trades. You can the soybean or not soybeans the 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 same candlestick patterns and uh, indicators can be used just as well on a 10-minute chart, a 5-minute chart, a 1-minute chart as they can on a daily, weekly, or monthly chart. Pull back right to the T-line, J-hook, away from the T-line, a pullback. We can recognize that this pullback is not an aggressive pullback. It's very indecisive. Hits the T-line and bang, they take it up again. This makes trading much easier uh, and a lot less and what I say anxiety full there was many times before the T line came came along that I would toss and turn at night not knowing whether the signal that occurred in my uh, chart that day was going to be a reversal or whether it was just going to be a slight pullback I had no way of knowing until the Rick introduced me to the T line and now we've been able to cultivate it to be a very effective tool that tells us when we want to get out and when we want to get back in or when we want to go short, looking for that uh, slow rollover situation. These all work extremely well, the same patterns on a 10-minute chart as they do on a daily chart. It just gives you that trade comfort where you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. You can stay with it until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Um, I mean, there's lots of situations right here or right here that would have told us that uh, we could be, it's time to take profits. But it was until the T-line and a candlestick sell signal and the T-line were breached that would give you that final, uh, uh, final decision for you. The rollover, again, this is on the Dow. This is on the 10-minute chart. I think even today, looks like today. Roll over and then bang. That's where they just start pulling the plug. We get kind of a forewarning of that. Seeing this kind of rollover allows you to go short on your uh, uh, YMs. Uh, let's see, why do I have intraday again? For some reason. Oh, all right. So this was for. Uh, now. Uh, for the candles, or for our simple rules, for trend analysis. That shouldn't have been interday. This should be just trend analysis. Notice what the Dow has been doing. I mean, every time it uh, came to the T-line, it would pop back up. Then it breached it, and we were just below the T-line. Yesterday, we did a doji, which made it very simple. The doji, at the end of a flat kind of trading area, was usually going to tell us whether they were going to take it up, which would look like a J-hook pattern, or take it down. If they took it down, where is their next target? Probably the 50-day moving average. Well, when we woke up this morning and saw the pre-market futures were down, it makes our decision that much more easy uh, to decide which way to go. If we use a simple doji rule, they're going to move it in the direction of how they open it. And if that's occurring right at the T-line, it gives you a good idea which way that trend is going to go. Now, how can we pick the 50 as being the potential target? Because look at our stochastics. They're almost into the oversold area, so there shouldn't be too much more downside. So we're just going to watch to see what happens once they get into the oversold area and what happens at the 50. Now, we don't need to necessarily use the Dow as our single indicator. Same scenario on the S&P 500. We had a doji right on the T-line uh, this morning. Pre-market futures would have told us either they're taking it up J hook or they're taking it back down because our stochastics are already heading in a downward direction. So where's our logical target? It could get down to the 50, but I would think that'd be pretty far. We might almost be getting into the oversold area. It might bobble right here on this support level. If we wake up and we see that the pre-market futures are going to knock the, the uh, 
I'll knock the the trend down. Then we have a lot of situations where our positions that were iffy the night before, they closed right on the T line after a bearish engulfing signal. What are the two options we have in this type of situation? One, if they're in an uptrend, they better open it positive and tra take it positive. Or two, if we see the pre-market futures are down and we see this is trading down, we don't have to have a lot of uh, thinking going on. We know to close out this position immediately if it opens lower because the probabilities are telling us after a bearish engulfing signal, a close right on the T-line, it better stay above the T-line to stay in it. If it opens lower, we want to be out of it. Yeah, people, this is not rocket science. This is just common sense that tells us if we have a candlestick sell signal, a support level that's acted as support, and now it's being breached after a candlestick sell signal, it's time to get out. So this is why, uh, again, we've done this session tonight. We're going to be continuing to add information about the T-line, but trend analysis and price analysis becomes a heck of a lot easier when the uh, candlestick signals and the T-line are used in conjunction. So with that, uh, Jim, go ahead and open it back up so I can take questions. And then if we have to, uh, we'll open it up to live charts to kind of clarify things. Or do I have to un... Aha, no, but okay. Now, is there any questions I can answer for people? When you say the further from the T-line, the stronger the signal needs to be. Oops, now this is be a problem because we're going to be scrolling. All right. When you say the further from the T-line, the stronger the signal needs to be plus close over the T-line, do you mean at least one of the major candlestick signals and not the secondaries? Uh, Jerry, because we so seldom see a secondary signal, yes, you probably want to see. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the whole question that whole question is based on secondary using secondary signals. They just don't occur often enough. I would guess for every time I see a secondary signal, I've seen 250 major signals. So, and the secondary signal may not even be. Uh, something that I'm going to trade in. So the further the T-line, or the further the price is away from the T-line, as soon as you see the sell signal, and I'm going to take it uh, that it's up above the uh, T-line, um, yeah, take profits because it's probably going to come back down to the T-line. On the other hand, if you see a long, steady trend, let me go back up here. If you see a long, steady trend, the, the longer this trend persists, the stronger this reversal signal needs to be. So here we had a bearish Harami with a good gap down back below the T-line. So the reason for that is, just like human nature, the more something gets set in its ways, um, the stronger you need something to change those ways, and that needs to be a, a very strong reversal signal. In trading intraday, when you have a close below or above the T-line, is there ever a situation when you should wait for the next candle to confirm? Uh, yes. Now, there's two situations that I should probably have put on here. One is if I was buying right here I'd want to, I'd probably wait until I saw it close above the T line because it wasn't that far away from the T line so I would want to see a candlestick signal plus a close above the T line before I want to step in on the other hand there's going to be times when the price moves way away from the T line 
and we see a reversal signal. That's a different situation. That tells me the probabilities are that if I see a buy signal in the oversold area away from the T-line, it's probably going to come back up at least to the T-line. I will buy immediately upon seeing the signal confirmation with the realization that it's probably going to come back up and test the T-line. That becomes my first resistance level that I want to watch. Worst case scenario at that point is I have a buy signal in an oversold condition, and if it fails at the T line, it tells me the downtrend is still in progress, but I may have made two, three, five, seven percent on that trade just getting back up to the T line. I hope that answered the uh, question you were asking. Do you use Bollinger Bands such as the two or three standard deviations? Roger, no. Um, we have, we've had John Bollinger on uh, a while back. My uh, contention is that the T-line is probably a heck of a lot more effective than Bollinger Bands, than Hike and Ashy uh, uh, signals. Uh, anything else you want to put on, uh, I, think, I think the T-line is probably one of the most effective, if not you know, it's an extremely effective indicator um, and should not be ignored. As a matter of fact, I am very grateful that Rick brought it to us, and that's, again, the whole point of the Candlestick Forum is people coming up with different ideas or different indicators that help confirm candlestick signals. And the T-line is probably about as effective a, a trend indicator as I've come across in 30-some-odd years of investing. Would it be better to wait until the full body closes below the T-line? Uh, yes. There's going to be a lot of times where you have what looks like a candlestick sell signal and it closes right on the T-line. You want to make sure that it's well below the T-line or it's not, uh, that it's not using the T-line still as support. So I would rather with the probabilities that if it closes right near the T-line and doesn't confirm that it's closing below the T-line, the, I just simply state as long as you can't see a close below the T-line, you're still considered up, considered in, a nice, or an up, in an uptrend. Uh, thank you, Jim, for closing the chat and reopen. Okay. <laughs> Does the T-line cross down through the 50 add more significance to a beginning of a downtrend? Not necessarily. Um, if they're coming down through the uh, 50, that means the 50 is failing as well as the T-line is uh, probably already showing you there is a downtrend. So on F F FNSR, you would not wait for the close below the T-line. You would have exited on the open. Yes. Let me find that chart way back down here. Because if you even took out the T-line, you're in an overbought condition, and you've got a sell signal, a bearish engulfing signal, what is confirmation that the bears are in control the next day? A lower open. In this case, we also had the added confirmation that it was closing or trading below the T-line. So it, with it trading right on the T-line, we know the T-line has to act as support. Now, if it opened right here and it kind of wobbled around during the day and did kind of a doji, because of the magnitude of the time frame that it stayed above the T-line, I'd give it one more day to see whether this wasn't just kind of a little setup to do a uh, morning star type signal and take it back up. So a little indecisive trade just below the T-line isn't going to convince me to get out of it until I see see something more. But this was substantial. This was a gap down below the T-line. That told me get out of the trade immediately. What time frames do you use to analyze entry and exits for intraday trading? Uh, most of my intraday trading is in commodities. And I'm using the one-minute, five-minute, ten-minute chart combination. But I start with a 10-minute chart, uh, chart to tell me where that trend or that pattern is starting to set up. When I see a pattern starting to set up, then I flip back to my 5-minute chart and see what type of pattern or 
signals is occurring on my five minute. And when that looks like it's also confirming, then I add another, uh, go back to my one minute and see what my one minute is doing. And that's, that's going to tell me when I actually get in or not get into a, a position. For example, if I see a five minute <coughs> or a ten minute chart showing me that we're in an uptrend or starting an uptrend, and the 10 minute is about ready to cross over the, uh, the T line. And I can go to the five minute knowing that probably the five minute has already crossed the T line. And so that's probably had a little bit of an up move. Now if I go to the one minute chart, more than likely that one minute chart is showing that it's already in an overbought condition. Now I have to watch that one minute chart to see if they're going to continue in that overbought condition or if they're going to start reversing and pull it back. On the one-minute chart, then I realize that the uh, five-minute and the ten-minute chart aren't ready to push through that uh, uh, that resistance level. What takes precedence, the stochastics or the T-line? The first criteria is the signal and where it's occurring in the uh, with the stochastics. The next criteria is do I get in before? It closes above the T-line or afterwards. If the uh, T-line, again, is far away, stochastics also, I mean, it's, it's probably, I guess a simple answer is if I see a candlestick buy signal in an oversold condition and it's a good distance away from the T-line, those are the criteria for buying. If I see a candlestick buy signal and stochastics in the oversold condition and it's very close to the T-line, then I'll use the uh, T-line also as my third reason or uh, decision maker to get in once I see it close above that level. Have you looked at the 10 EMA? Doesn't it seem like it would would differ much from the 8? It doesn't differ all that much. So some people ask, why not the 9? Why not the uh, 10 simple? Just seems to be that the 8 works very effectively. You can probably play around with the other ones, but it doesn't, doesn't re really make any difference whether they work or which one works, is if one works as well as the other, they're still the same thing. How do you use the direction of the T-line? Uh, do you only go long if it is rising? Not necessarily there either. Uh, for example, here could be a downtrend situation, and they've taken it way down. Um, what was our other one where... Uh, Well, for example, when they gap this way up, remember, your stochastics are still in an upward direction, and you moved a good distance away. So the direction of the T-line doesn't matter in this case. It's where the price is compared to where the T-line is. Uh, example of T-line crunch. Let's see, go back to the T-line crunches again. Oh, let's see. T-line crunch is when you've come up, you've butt your head on a resistance level, pulls back, but it won't go back below the T-line. The T-line keeps crunching it back up toward the uh, resistance level until they finally break it through. Um, Whoops, I went way too far here. What What is T-line crunch? Now, the T-line crunch is, again, where the T-line is not letting the price come back down through the uh, T-line that you know that the force is still pushing it up. Now, at some point, had one of these closed back below the T-line, that kind of negates the T-line crunch. The reason we can see the T-line crunch is nothing can get below it right now. Um, T-line is a trend indicator, meaning not work well with sideways. Now, like anything else, if it's sideways, you got to figure out what, what's happening until uh, you see, see some sort of trend starting. But that's also a function of when do we see a, a candlestick buy signal that's being confirmed. Um, which might be right here where you see a 
bullish Harami confirmation gap up. Now they've gotten through the T line. There's going to be a lot of times where I get into a position, get right back out, get into a position, get right back out, get into a position, and hopefully that move has well covered the cost of the uh, getting in and out of a few few other positions. Um, what are the parameters of the stochastics? 1233 is what I use. That's nothing set in stone. It's just over the last 30 years now, uh, they seem to work the best for, and that's not a difficult process. All I did was take charts and try to line my stochastics up to where the bottom was right at the bottom and the top was right at the top, uh, and 1233 seemed to work, work the best. Longer term uh, holds might use a 14.55. Uh, when I was day trading the E-minis, I'd use a combination of the 12.33 and the 5.22. Uh, the 5.22 would do, be the little wiggles, and the uh, 12.33 would tell me what the overall trend was. The T-line is KISS method, less overthinking. That's pretty much you know, that's uh, very easy, uh, you know, a very good description because uh, unfortunately my hair had already turned white uh, before the T-line came along. If, uh, if it had come along before my hair had turned white, I'd probably still be oh, that blonde that you'd see on the beach. Let's see what else we got here. Question on Bollinger Bands was, do you use them to tell you when you're getting far or very far from the T-line, showing a better indication that it's probably going to be a pullback? No, I can see that visually just on the uh, on the chart itself. I mean, when you can start seeing a lot of white space between the T-line and your trading, you know to start watching the, for the pullback. Now, that's not to say that... Uh, yeah, you can use the T-line anyway, or the Bollinger Bands. Uh, I just don't use them. Even John, when he was on here, said the Bollinger Bands doesn't really give you direction. It just tells you whether the direction you're already in, whether you're out of whack or too high in that direction, or uh, you're going to need a pullback. Besides scanning for 8T support, what other scanning settings should I use? Uh, basically, you look for the signals. The signals are your first number one criteria. Uh, so my criteria pretty much is where are the stochastic, or if I see a candlestick reversal signal, where is it in the trend, where are the stochastics, and where is the T-line, what's the T-line doing? Then how far away am I from the 50 or the 200 or the 20? That becomes my next uh, resistance level. Since you started using T-Line, would you say using it along with candlestick signals that your trading trades are about 75, 80% accurate or higher or lower? Uh, let's just put it this way. I'm, I'm probably a heck of a lot. I don't know the statistics uh, because it's hard to keep statistics, obviously, with all our trading because sometimes the markets. But I would guess that my accuracy became – I don't, I don't even know how to put it in there. Just, let's put it this way. It became much, much greater. as My profits started getting much bigger after, uh, after I started using the T-line. I was making a decent living trading before the T-line came along. Now I'm making a very decent living trading after the T-line came along. Uh, let's see. Can we use stop loss orders during the day if we can't uh, watch the market? Yes, Jules, uh, uh, and that's a very simple process, a whole other uh, uh, session. Uh, and let's see. And for those that aren't members of the Candlestick Forum, this is part of our our modus operandi. We'd rather be teaching people live than people just buying the uh, – CDs and trying to learn from them. So part of the daily or the monthly fee is that we're going to be doing two or three of these training sessions where uh, oh, the training sessions probably will more than pay for the uh, 
the monthly fees on top of everything else uh, because I think people get a little bit more, uh, oh, what do I want to say, uh, conviction or get a little bit more information out of a live training session where you can ask questions than just uh, watching it. Uh, uh, plus, you don't get my jokes on the, uh, the training CDs. I know that's a deterrent. If our questions are not answered tonight, can we email you for clarification? Certainly. Steve at candlestickforum.com. And you can also private message me if it's something that's been lengthy and you're not quite sure. The, that bearish engulfing in the middle is a reason to get out. Shelby, or Shelly, where, which one was that? Uh, oh, okay, on uh, FSN. Let's take a look. And this is probably, uh, yeah, bearish engulfing. Would have been a reason for me to get out by saying, all right, if they open this lower the next day, I'm out of the position. It has to open higher and trade higher to keep me in. There's going to be a lot of times where they close it below the T-line, and I get it out. Next day, they take it right back up above the T-line, I get right back in. Again, whatever I missed here is just insurance that I wasn't holding on to something that might be going this way. I've learned now that the ego loses me a lot of money, that if I can tell myself, get out, when it's time to get out and get back in when it's time to get back in, if something embarrassing happens, I can still bet you that 99.999% of the time, the only person that's going to be embarrassed about something happening is you because nobody else cares what you're doing each day when you're trading. They're having their own problems trading. Uh, that version, yeah, could have been a reason to get out if it had it was below the T-line. Uh, if I'd gotten out, I would have been right back in the next day because it was right back up above the T-line. I might have said, dang, Jimmy Christmas, I got out here and I had to get back in here. But I don't say that anymore because I know this is all part of the uh, probabilities that you're in the right direction. All right, so you gave up a little bit. If, if I have a 10-point move on a stock – and I only make eight points on that move because the other two were getting out when it was time to get out and getting back in, that doesn't bother me at all. I'd rather be 80% correct 100% of the time than 100% correct much less than that. All right. On an SFR, where would you have your stop? Oh, uh yeah, and, uh, yeah. In, in a case like this, it could have been out. In a case like this, in an overbought condition with a little hanging man, it could have been out right here at the low of the previous day's uh, hanging man because that would tell me they were probably coming back to the T line. So I didn't trade this one back here. I was using this as an illustration because today people were asking about it. But more than likely, if I had owned this, I would have had my stop right here to see whether it was going to, because if it came back down through there, where do you think it was going to go to? Probably to the T, back to the T line. Once it got there, I could make a decision whether it was time to buy or not. This signal right here told me the selling had stopped. I'm buying right back here. So if I sold out right here and had to buy back right here, all right, that was not enough to even, uh, that just, again, secured me that I wasn't owning something that was heading back down, which was what I used to do because I didn't want to sell up here because I'd already figured out this stock was going through the roof. And so if it backed off a little bit, I was going to wait for it to turn around and go back up, and I'd hold it and hold it and hold it. And finally, when it got back down to break even, I'd sell it and say, why the heck didn't I sell it when I had a profit? On the IOC chart, the stock on a few occasions broke the T-line only to run down to the 50-day moving average. Will you take this into account with some stocks in order to – Avoid a whipsaw. Uh, KB, if I can see that it's breaking through the T-line and probably going back to the 50, I'll still close out the position because the worst-case scenario is if it goes down 
and comes back up through the T-line, I just buy it right back again about where I sold it, and I didn't carry the risk of thinking it was going to support down at the next uh, support level or hoping that it was going to support at the next support level. Uh, uh, somebody had a question, what was the the uh, disadvantage of using the 20-day moving average versus the 8 EMA, the 20-day moving average for position trades and the T-line for swing trades? Because the 20 day moving average is only an effective moving average once a trend gets started and stays extensively long. The T line will be effective on long term, short term, day trades. It's effective on everything. So the 20 day moving average isn't a highly effective uh, moving average. It's just one that's watched. Um, the 50 and the 200 are probably much more heavily uh, uh, decision-making time than the 20 is. How can the T-line help in an entering and exiting bull put spreads and bear call spreads? Uh, same scenario. If you see it's time to go short because it's going back below the T-line, let me see how I can do this. I mean, you, you, the T line isn't the factor for what uh, what trade strategy you use. The T line is for analyzing what the trend is going to do, and then you figure out what the best uh, strategy to put on. So again, it's a very effective uh, for telling you whether it's time to go long or go short. Um, what about the long red candlestick under the word? sell in FSN, would that be a sell signal? That's this one right here? Yes, that's what the one we were discussing. That would have been a sell. If I'd owned, the, owned it, I would have probably stopped out here, and I would have probably bought back it here the next day. Uh, how does the two and three moving average fit into this uh, picture? Right now we're doing uh, studies which are pretty getting pretty close to coming up with concrete or conclusive results using the three exponential moving average. It's kind of a faster indicator that when the prices move away, even from the T line, that now you can go to the three EMA and that becomes an effective uh, uh, support or resistance level. <laughs> so that if you if you see a a the price move rapidly up and it's moved away from the T-line. Now you watch for a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the 3T line, which now means that 3T is probably going to bring the price back down toward the uh, uh, the to the T-line. Nuance. Uh, a T-line crunch failure. That's pretty much so. And that's where you get very good confirmation of whether the uh, what the price is going to do so that you know exactly when to get out of a position. Uh, and the illustration of that was that the uh, nuance for the last week or so had been trading between the uh, 200 and bouncing up off the uh, T line. But today there was a gap down below the uh, T line, and that's probably when you should have been out of the position. Now likely that it's broken the T-line, it's going to come back to the 50-day moving average. Do you want T-line above 20 or 50 for a buy or vice versa for a sell? Not necessarily that either because there's going to be times when things get ready to buy and they're well below the moving averages, and there's going to be times to get ready to, to sell when they're well above the uh, uh, those moving averages. Do you have software to find these setups? Oh, these aren't setups. These are kind of just trend analysis. That uh, the setups are the uh, reversals. What we're looking for is the uh, reversal signals. These or these, and then we use the T line to help us identify when it's time to enter or exit a trade. 
Swing trades entered. Swing trades entered at end of day. Swing trades, not really, no. Um, that's an idea. Well, Mark, this is why we're we're doing this. So if you have, yeah, you know, keep asking questions or if something's not uh, fitting in, just send me a uh, private message me on the uh, chat room or send me an email and or uh, uh, tell uh, Abraham that you'd like me to call you. Yeah, most of my trades, I would say 80% are probably done within the first 45 minutes in the morning. Maybe 15% of my trades are done in the last uh, 20 minutes of the trading day. And I would say maybe less than 5% are done during the middle part of the day. On the FSN chart, uh, would you please comment on the bullish engulfing in the middle, the bullish engulfing in the middle? Uh, the bearish engulfing, don't see a bullish engulfing in the middle. Uh, that one's not quite a bullish engulfing. Occasionally, just because a uh, in an uptrend, a there's a sell signal doesn't necessarily mean that that trend is going to come back down and uh, be a strong reversal. Let's see if I've got it on here. Oops, maybe this was it. No, nope, maybe this was it. No, that wasn't it. Um, I think it was IS. Eh. Now, for example, uh, the uh, IS, IS, uh, this one had sell signals, but it popped back up. So the trend was is, has been more like this. On the other hand, when we had the sell signal on uh, Dean Foods, it came right back down to the 200 until the 200 and the 50. I'm sorry, the key line caught up with each other. Uh-oh, no charts. No charts. All right, what happened here? I don't think I hit anything. The Ah. All right, what's happened here? Do the region again. Hit project. Well, Shazam. What? Would have made that happen. All right. We're going to take a 90 second break. Can you still all hear me? All right. Everybody hold on. I'm going to reboot uh, Omnovia real quick. I'll be right back. Don't go away. We'll finish this. Hell, now I lost all the questions before 8.50. Shazam. Okay. Any questions that I haven't gotten to? Okay. So if you are in a stay in bull trade close, followed by a bearish engulfing season, even though it does not close below the T line, 
it is still a good indicator to take profits on a down open on day three, like in MCP today. Uh, yes. You're still using the uh, signals as your top priority. But once again, MCP, just, and this is just talking off the top of my head because I don't have it up on these charts, but MCP just took a nice bullish move over the last few days, so there wasn't any sustained uptrend. The longer that uptrend stays in progress, okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I say I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, MCP did not have a, a sustained uptrend. It just had kind of a, a bullish bounce, which is a strong bullish bounce. But today it showed that there was enough weakness, weakness to get back out of the trade. That doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to do a stutter step to you because there was also some buying down here. They pulled it back. Now you watch for the next buy signal. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll try to do a a question and answer uh, page. Um, uh, do I just just stop? Uh, not necessarily. I do it on a daily basis. Um, okay, can you recap buy? And sell using T line. All right. Again, if you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T line after a strong uptrend, this looks like a strong candle. That tells me it's, they've broken down. It's time to be out. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you can be buying on strength and stay in it as long as that so that uh, uptrend continues until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T line. Uh, if you'd like, DK, we can just send out this uh, presentation, I think. Um, Uh, let's see. Do you use or just stop, or stop limit orders daily or trailing stops? Uh, I usually do the trailing stops based on that if I'm in an overbought condition, where is a spot that tells me the bears are in control? So in this case, I probably wouldn't want to see them close more than halfway down this candle and a close below the T line. So I pick a spot that tells me where would where would the bears have to bring this back to uh, to tell me I should be out of this position. That does not necessarily not stop loss. That's a whole different uh, 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 subject. We'll do a stop loss here again pretty soon. I can't remember this. You rise. It's already September. Jeez. Do you scale up your positions on a pullback, Ross? Do I scale up? Uh, do I add to my positions on a pullback? Uh, no. Usually my positions are, if I'm at a full position, that's the top I'm going to be in. Now, if I take profits and I take half off, then I can uh, – uh, uh, then I can add to back that half a position. But I try not to spend too much time trying to do the calculations of how much – uh, I'll take off. Now, the Japanese rice traders say you sell your last bag of rice after the peak. So that means you're selling into the uh, strength. And so there will be times where I'll sell off a quarter of a position, a quarter of a position, a quarter of a position, and a quarter of a position. But uh, once I have a full position on, usually on a pullback, either I've already come out before the pullback is starting or is starting to show the first sell signals. Uh, with the idea that I can always look at it when it does the next buy signal. Uh, I can do a talk on, a, on the scans again uh, probably here in September since everybody seems to like that one.
What candles make up a J-hook pattern? Is a gap up necessarily after a pullback? No, not necessarily. And usually what a J-hook pattern is, we've got some in here. They're mild ones, but I'll uh, find them. Here's kind of a pullback, our J-hook pattern. When it pulls back, notice it's very indecisive trading. Dojis, spinning tops, inverted hammers, and then bullish confirmation. You don't necessarily need that gap up coming out the other side, but it's that much more convincing that if you've seen a doji and a gap up up through this level, you probably have a J-hook pattern in progress. One thing that's good about Steve as a trader as well as an educator, a lot of people only teach, uh, don't really trade. Yes, I uh, trade every day. That's why you see some silent uh, spaces during the chat room. That's usually because I've got some trades on. Stochastics are used, or I'm using our, uh, the slow 12.33. Okay, I probably kept you over time now. Was there enough information in here? This is the first time we've done a T-line. Was there enough information in here? Do we need to put more information, or was there too much information? I think we do have one scheduled for. That was perfect. All right. I guess the important point that I want to get to everybody is the T-line is strikingly effective. Um. And there's no other reason to say that other than it's just worked so well. So uh, if you have a decision to make and it's right there at the T-line and it's not closing below the T-line, give it one more day uh, because the probabilities are that if it doesn't close below the T-line, you're still in an uptrend. Um, uh, Larry, yes, and that's why you want to use your analysis uh, the same analysis for a, the uh, market indexes as you do for a stock, and that uh, that was very simple today, that as soon as you saw that uh, there were dojis yesterday and they were opening things lower on the indexes, whoops, that we were probably heading down. Only line more effective than the Congo line. All right. Uh, if you follow T line, you will never have to stand a soup line. That's right. Um, okay, great. All right. Well, I know you all want to rush off and uh, watch the Steelers game. So everybody have a good evening. We'll see you in the chat rooms tomorrow.